Mr. President, Mr. Elvis Presley. Well, uh, Mr. Presley, it is a pleasure. Hmm. Oh, you know what that is? That's a moon rock. Very proud to have that here in the Oval Office. That was uh, given to me personally by a great American, Mr. Buzz Aldrin. You can uh, lift the glass there and pick it up if you like. Oh, that's cool, man. Buzz sent me one, too. Oh, he did. Well, of, co <laughs> of course he did. Mr. President? Put it right there. Well, OK, hello. <laughs> uh, why don't you have a seat? Sure thing. This is a great place you got here, huh? Well, it's uh, really the people's house, though. Oh. I'm just a temporary guest, as they say. That's right. I was telling one of the gals outside, it reminds me of my Graceland. Oh, uh, it does, does it? Uh, how many square feet uh, is uh, this uh, Graceland of yours? Not sure. 10,000, maybe? Well, that is a fine size for a home, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's more than fine. Of course, the White House here is, I think, about uh, 55,000 feet, something like that. Well, actually, I've made a few additions, so uh, maybe a little more than that. But I don't think it's the size of a man's home that defines him, you know? M&Ms are my favorite. Oh, mine too. <clears throat> so, Mr. Presley, how can I help you? Well, Mr. President, first of all, I want to tell you what an honor it is to be in your presence. You have a bottle opener? Oh, uh, well, there should have been uh, one. Uh, maybe you could run out and get him one, Crow. Yes, Mr. President. Oh, and uh, get a Dr. Pepper for me too. It's on its way. Hmm. So, I, uh, I read your letter. I wrote it on the plane. I could tell. Mr. President, this is my little angel, Lisa Marie. She's two years old. Well, she is a beautiful little girl. Yes, sir. She's my pride and joy. And this is my beautiful wife, Scylla. Oh, well, she is very charming. <clears throat> Mr. President? Bud. Mr. Presley? These M&Ms are great. Good to hear, Mr. Presley. You got some good fellas working for you, Mr. President. My guys are outside. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, as I really do need to be going, we should probably get what you wanted. These are some of my closest associates, and contrary to what you may have heard, Mr. President, they are not part of any mafia. That is just a crazy rumor started by nasty journalists. Oh, they love to make it up, don't they? Last month, Look Magazine made up some cockamamie drivel about how I uh, broke into the dean's office while I was at Duke. You know, you give a man enough money and he'll say anything. You know, they'll just ruin a man's reputation. They don't give a good goddamn. They just write what they want. Mm, hear, hear to that. Uh, everyone has a badge. Mr. President, I've shown you these photos because I'm deeply concerned about the direction our great nation is taking. Yes, of course. Now, I'm uh, going to need an autograph for uh, my Julie. That's your family there? Oh, some good-looking kids. Well, they really take after their mother. Well, it takes two good-looking folks to make a good-looking baby, Mr. President. Oh, are you, uh... You're saying, as a gentleman, I'm good-looking, too? Well, of course, Mr. President. Everybody knows that. Well, I... Uh... Now, plainly speaking, sir, I want to get people to respect our country, to respect our flag, because that's what's getting lost in our nation. It bothers me to see young people burning flags and smoking dope. And just because I don't smoke dope or grow a beard, does that make me a straight or square? Because if it does, heck, I'll take being a straight or square any day of the week. <laughs> the kids today are being brainwashed, Mr. President, 
It's what they're listening to and what they're watching. Mm. That's what's doing it to them. Take that Woodstock, for example. What the heck was that? I'll tell you what it was. It was an excuse to get naked, get high, and roll around in the mud. <laughs> well, I'm with you there. Four, three, two, one. Mr. President, you have your meet and greet. Oh, uh, no, not right now, thank you. But it's with the delegation. I said it's fine. But it's with the donors. I said it can wait. Oh, and uh, Krog, uh, make sure uh, that we get a picture with uh, Mr. Presley and me. All he's outside, he's ready for it. No pictures. Uh, Mr. Presley, it's standard for us. I understand, bud, but not today. Now, if you don't mind. <clears throat> May I continue? By all means. Thank you. I have it on very good authority that many of the so-called underground groups have been infiltrated by communists. Oh. Yes, sir, and I find it downright anti-American. Just like the Beatles. The Beatles, well, I don't like them. They are anti-American. Hmm. Possibly with communist leanings. Well, just look at them. Let's look at the facts, Mr. President. After coming here and making all that money, they split back to England start saying all this anti-American stuff, speaking against us in the press. Well, some people think they can say anything. Specifically about our policies in Southeast Asia, sir. Did you know that? I did not know that. It was Lenin. Kids think he's some kind of prophet. And, well, what I'm trying to say is, sir, they may not actually be in the employ of the communists, but if... Encouraging revolution doesn't sound like subversive propaganda. I don't know what it is. Well, right, yes. Yeah. See, I've been studying communist brainwashing techniques for over 10 years now, and the drug culture too, Mr. President. And it's my belief that if we don't do something to handle this situation very quickly, it could very easily get out of hand. Well, you want to know why the hell the communists are so against drugs? It's because they love to booze. Especially the Russians, I've seen it. You talk about out of hand. And that's why uh, the communists and the left-wingers are clinging to one another because they're trying to destroy us, Elvis. I know, sir, good, honest Americans. They hate us. They don't hate us, Elvis. They uh, hate what we stand for. I mean, you and me, we rose from nothing. My pa worked in a grocery store. Your father was a sharecropper, yes? whole slew of things, well, sir. I think we were both somewhat loners. And look where I am today, and look where you are. Well, a lefty sees that, and instead of wanting to walk in our footsteps, why, uh, they get jealous. Brings all their failures up bubbling right in front of their faces. And, uh, well, so, of course, uh, they react like caged animals because that's what they are, just animals. I know, sir. <clears throat> and I want to help to stop it. Well, I think that is just great. Absolutely. So, uh, my boys were telling me uh, something like a concert, a telethon, a television special? No, sir. I want to go undercover. Undercover? Yes. Oh, you want to be an actual... I'm sorry, you want to what? I want to be an agent at large. You see... If I can get a federal narcotics badge, it's my belief that I could protect this nation from sliding into anarchy. Well, uh, I, uh... Let's say I could infiltrate a band or a hippie commune or a spy or a double agent, something like that, only disguising myself as one of them, hiding my own true feelings. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, how... Let's say the Rolling Stones or the Grateful Dead or maybe even the Black Panthers. Heck, I could probably slip from one group to the other without even being detected. And then, just when they let their guard down, I'd bust them. I'd bust them all. Of course, I would have to be so deep undercover so that no one would know it was me. But in order for that to happen, nobody, I mean, nobody can know about this on the outside, just a select few. You, of course, Mr. President, and, and maybe Mr. Hoover. 
How much longer is this going to take? Is there uh, any way we can speed this up? You want me to tell the president of the United States to speed it up? How long does it take to get to the airport? Holiday traffic? Hour, hour and a half? You have somewhere you need to be? You could say that. I'm supposed to be meeting my girlfriend's father for dinner. I'm gonna ask him if I can marry her. <sighs> yeah, right. When I first started working at the White House, the guy that hired Chapin told me something I'll never forget. He said, everyone should get married. At least once. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Well, in our line of work, the only ones with marriages intact are the ones in front of the camera. And half the time, those are just for show. When you work on the world's biggest stage, you gotta choose. You know, um, I got in a motorcycle accident a couple of years back in L.A. A gossip columnist broke the story. One of Elvis's buddies gets in a motorcycle accident and breaks his pelvis. Good thing it wasn't Elvis. Yeah. I carried around that article in my pocket for years. Because it was the first time that me and him were actually mentioned in a magazine together. I was actually proud. So sad. got a flight to catch. I'll make you a deal. Yes, sir. We're uh, both realists. One hand washes the other, right? Mm -hmm. I'll get you your badge, and we'll have you meet uh, with uh, Hoover, and uh, he'll do whatever he does with all the undercover business and so on and so forth. Yes, sir. And return for that. Yeah. Please, Elvis, may I get an autograph for my Julie? My pleasure. And a picture. Well, sir, I don't know how I can be undercover. We won't the... release it to the public. Elvis, please help me out here, friend to friend. I'll tell you what, Mr. President. I'll take that picture. If you'll take the time to meet my friends, it sure would mean the world to them. Where are they? Right outside. Well, let's get him in. Pro! Three, two, one. Now, I uh, believe uh, Elvis uh, would like to get his uh, badge. I'll make the call right away, Mr. President. I need my badge, Mr. Cougar. I just slam the Beatles to make it happen, but don't let me know. I have to go. I'm, I'm sorry. They already said it won't make my flight. Jerry, you got to stick around and see me get sworn in, man. I'm sorry. Hotel room at three o'clock. Uh, would three o'clock work for you, Will? That'd be just fine, Mr. President. Elvis, that works for Mr. President. I'm leaving. Don't you want to see this badge? Mr. President, could you excuse us for one moment? Oh, yeah. Mr. President. Jesus, Jerry, you're embarrassing the hell out of me, man. What's Gibbs? A badge? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. You want a badge. Congratulations, you got it. But now I gotta go home. Well, let me ask you something, Jerry. What exactly are you rushing home for? My life, Charlotte. I'm gonna ask you to marry me. Jerry, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. Hey. Hey, I'll tell you what. Charlotte likes horses, right? I'm gonna call her up and give her the good news myself. I'm gonna buy you guys a ranch right outside Memphis. 